Okay, so in this video, we're going to go over what is called passive transport. Now, here's a little example that I'm sure you've all have noticed. Here we have a beaker of water, and let's say we add one, two, three drops of red food coloring. Notice how the red food coloring, give it time, give it a few minutes, will eventually spread over the entire container, and you don't even have to stir up the container, but eventually the entire liquid will be red. Well, that's a great example of something called diffusion, which is a type of passive transport. Let's go ahead and discuss this in more detail. So when we look at the definition of passive transport, it's pretty straightforward. It's how cells move molecules without spending any of their energy. And in the world of cells, energy is a molecule called adenosine triphosphate, ATP. You'll often hear ATP kind of compared to as money of a cell. You know, when you have money, you want to spend your money carefully. When cells have ATP energy, they want to uh, spend their ATP uh, carefully. So they don't want to be careless with how they spend their ATP. And so cells would love to move molecules around without having to spend any of their ATP energy. Well, this is what we call passive transport. It's how cells move molecules without spending ATP. In my animation here, by the way, I have a kayaker. Ask yourself, does this kayaker need to spend any of his energy in order to move? You can see that the, the black lines are showing the current of this river. I hope you know the answer is no. The kayaker, kayaker can just sit there and let the current of the river take the kayaker downstream. That kayaker didn't need to spend any energy. And so when we look at passive transport, again, we, it's, we're going to show you it's how molecules move from a high concentration to a low concentration. And this process requires no energy. By high concentration, we mean where the molecules are most abundant or most plentiful. In this picture right here, you can see the yellow dots are representing molecules, and they're most abundant in the lower left-hand corner. But as we go through this animation, the yellow dots are beginning to spread out, and now they're fully spread spread out over the entire size of this container. This is what we mean by mo molecules moving from a high to a low concentration. We kind of say it's like they move down their concentration gradient. So they start high and they move down to a low concentration. Examples of passive transport, and that's what the rest of this video is going to discuss, are diffusion, osmosis, and facilitated diffusion. So let's go into diffusion first. Okay, when we look at diffusion, again, we have a simple de uh, definition here. It's the movement of molecules from an area of high to low concentration. And as we said a moment ago, it's an example of passive transport, so no energy is required. The movement of these molecules is going to continue until there's an equilibrium, a state of balance. And so in, in my picture up here, we can see that the yellow dots are all clumped and concentrated at the left of the picture. And over on the right side of the picture, there's a couple yellow dots, but you can see that they're less concentrated. So molecules are going to spread out and move until there's a balance. This is called diffusion. And diffusion is really how molecules move into and out of most cells. And it's something we're going to discuss in a little more detail. So right here we have a cell surrounded by oxygen, and my question in O2 is oxygen. My question in the middle is, will oxygen mostly enter, or will oxygen mostly exit the cell? Well, find the high concentration. I hope you can see the high concentrations on the outside of the cell. And so by diffusion moving from high to low, if it's going to move, oxygen's going to move from the outside to the inside. Notice how a couple oxygens exited the cell, but the vast majority entered the cell. And now there's a nice balance. We have that state called equilibrium. Well, here's a, a, a neat little anim, animation here about our, about us breathing. Here we have a lady doing yoga, and she's inhaling a big breath of O2, which is oxygen. Let's follow that oxygen into her lungs. When we zoom on into her lungs, we can see that the oxygen, the O2, has spread to all those branches inside of her lungs. 
So when we zoom on in even more to her lungs, we know that you might know that you, uh, the, the tips of your lungs, the, those branches, the tips of the branches inside of your lungs have these little air sacs in them called the alveoli. And so in this animation here, here's an air sac that's just filled up with O2. And my question is, where is the high oxygen concentration and where is the low oxygen concentration? I hope you can see the high oxygen concentration is in the alveoli and the low oxygen concentration is in the bloodstream. So due to diffusion, oxygen will simply move from a high to a low concentration. So now that there's oxygen in the bloodstream, how does that oxygen get spread around the body? Our heart, our heart will now, uh, because our heart is constantly pumping and beating, our heart will pump our blood, which is now full of oxygen, around this woman's body. So there goes the oxygen, it's being pumped around her body. And when we follow that oxygen, when we follow the oxygen, here's the oxygen that she just inhaled. And if I were to ask you, okay, you know, Find cell X at the bottom of the picture. Cell X is a cell just like every other cell. It needs oxygen. Notice how cell X is not in direct contact with the blood flow, with the bloodstream. So how the heck does cell X get oxygen? Well, the simple answer for how cell X gets oxygen is if we remember what diffusion is. Diffusion is the movement of molecules from a high to a low concentration. Ask yourself, where is the high oxygen concentration? And ask yourself, where is the low oxygen? Well, the high oxygen concentration is in the blood. The low oxygen is in cell X and all the other cells. And so simply by diffusion, molecules are going to move from a high concentration, the blood flow, to a low concentration, the cells. So cell X and all the other cells get their oxygen through the process of diffusion. Well, this reverse process is true with carbon dioxide. Over time, your cells create carbon dioxide as a waste gas. It builds up in cells and too much is fatal. It needs to be removed. So as our cells work to remove carbon dioxide, ask yourself, where is the high carbon dioxide concentration? And where is the low carbon dioxide concentration? I hope you see the high carbon dioxide concentration is in the cells. The low carbon dioxide concentration is in the blood. So carbon dioxide is simply going to diffuse from the cells into the blood. And once the carbon dioxide's in the blood, don't forget your heart is still pumping. And so your heart is still pumping blood. And now in this case, our blood is full of carbon dioxide. This carbon dioxide rich blood is going to go back to the lungs. So let's go back to the lungs and, and follow this process to the end. When we come back to the lungs, again, there's our, our air sac called the alveoli. And here we have our heart pumping carbon dioxide back to the lungs. And my question is, where is the high carbon dioxide concentration? I hope you see it's in the blood. And so carbon dioxide is simply going to diffuse from a high concentration in the blood to a low concentration in the alveoli. And now that CO2 is back in the lungs, we simply begin the exhale. So the woman begins to exhale. You, you also have a, a muscle underneath your ribs or underneath your lungs and between your ribs uh, called your diaphragm. That helps to push out some of the carbon dioxide. And so I mentioned a moment ago, the diaphragm is a muscle that helps push out some of the CO2 from the lungs. And now we're back to where we started. This woman who is doing yoga and is breathing heavily, she just exhaled a bunch of carbon dioxide. And the process will simply repeat with every breath. Well, let's uh, turn directions and, and focus on another type of passive transport called osmosis. Osmosis is the same thing as diffusion. Don't mix the two up. They really are the same thing. The big difference is that osmosis implies water. Osmosis implies the diffusion of water from a high concentration to a low concentration. 
And so in this animation here, pretend that we have a, a, a container of distilled water. And if you're not sure what distilled water is, it's 100% pure water. There are no solutes in it. It's as pure as water can reasonably be. It's also something that doesn't exist naturally on Earth. There's no rivers of distilled water. There's no lakes. It doesn't rain distilled water. Distilled water is created basically in a chemistry lab. Well, so here we have a cell placed in a container of 100% pure water. There's nothing in this water other than water. And this is an example of what is called a hypotonic environment. When cells are placed in a hypotonic environment, ask yourself, where is the high water concentration? I hope you see it's on the outside of the cell. And so the high water concentrations on the outside of the cell and osmosis is movement of water from high to low, high to low concentration. So in this case, water will move from the water into the cell and the cell will swell up and get bigger and bigger and bigger to the point where it very well could even burst. It won't, it's not necessarily going to burst, but if it swells too much, it very well might. Well, and another, uh, the kind of the opposite of this is, is something is salt water. Salt water is high in solutes, namely salt. And so in this picture here, we have a cell filled with water, but notice this, the water inside of the cell is fairly pure. But the water outside of the cell has a bunch of S's. The S's stand for salt. Remember, this is salt water. So when you look at this picture, this is an example of what is called a hypertonic environment. And in this case, the high water concentration is in the cell. There might be more individual water molecules outside of the cell if you were to actually count them up. But the fact that the water on the outside is mixed with salt makes the water on the outside less pure. And so water moves from a high concentration to a low. So water will move from the cell to the outside. The cell very well might even shrivel and become dehydrated. So these are examples of, this is an example of a hypertonic environment and how cells react to them. So there's a quick little lab activity. Let's say here's a potato slice that's placed in the inside of a dish, a container of salt water. And here's another potato slice in a container of distilled water. Well, after 30 minutes, let's say you were to weigh them uh, before and after, and the potato sli slice lost weight in the salt water container. But in the distilled water after 30 minutes, the potato slice got heavier, it gained weight. So if we were in class, I would have you pause and try to answer these questions with your neighbor. So if you're watching this video, pause the video. I'm going to go over these answers in three, two, one. So let's look at the salt uh, water potato first. Where is the high concentration experiment? Well, well, so where is the high concentration in the salt water experiment? Well, if you know that it lost weight, well, that's because it lost water. And so in my animation, you can see that water again moves from a high concentration to a low concentration. So water must be exiting this potato slice. And so once you, once you identify this and examine this animation, it's pretty straightforward. There's a high water concentration in the potato. There's a low water concentration in the solution outside, in the water outside the potato. When we look at the other side, we can see that the distilled uh, potato, the water put in distilled water got heavier. The reason it got heavier is because it absorbed water. And so if we know that water went into it, that means the high concentration was on the outside of the potato and the low concentration was on the inside and water moves from high to low and that's why it got heavier. And so that answers question one, two, and three. Well, here's a couple more to ponder. Again, if we were in class, I'd give you some time to work on this with your neighbor. Pause the, uh, pause the video. I'm going to go over these answers in three, two, one. So why did the saltwater potato lose weight? You know, try to avoid answers like, I lost weight because it got dehydrated. That's true. It, the potato slice did become dehydrated, but why? And so this is what we mean by, uh, you know, be thorough with your answers. Water diffused out of the potato. Water moved from a high concentration inside the potato to a low concentration outside the potato. For number six, why did the 
the distilled water potato gain weight? Try to avoid answers like, it gained weight because it absorbed water. That's true, it did absorb water, but why? It absorbed water because, again, there was a high concentration of water outside the potato, a low concentration inside, so water diffused into, into the potato. So let's wrap up this video here. Facilitated diffusion is our final type of passive transport I want to mention. And so remember that uh, in, in the animation right now, you can see that these blue dots are representing like oxygen and carbon dioxide. And, and small molecules like this are able to pass directly through the cell membrane. And that's what you see happening right here. Now, there, the topic we're looking at right now is called facilitated diffusion. Now, the word facilitate simply means to help. And so what we're going to show you is that sometimes diffusion needs a little help. In facilitated diffusion, larger molecules are going to enter and exit with the help. Remember, facilitate means help. So larger molecules are going to enter and exit with the help of what's called a protein channel located within the cell membrane or the plasma membrane. Watch this. Glucose is just too big of a molecule to pass directly through the cell membrane. However, because of the protein channels that are embedded throughout the cell membrane, glucose molecules can pass through from the outside to the inside of the cell. And no energy is required. And again, this is what we mean by passive transport. No ATP energy is required for this to happen. And so one more time, here comes a glucose molecule passing through the protein channel. And so these uh, protein channels help larger molecules go through diffusion. And that's why it's called facilitated diffusion. So when we wrap up this video, if you're in my class, pause the video and try to answer these 10 questions. In fact, there's actually two more questions after this. There's a total of 12. So here's one through 10. Pause the video if you're working on them at home. I'm going to show you 11 and 12 right now. So here are the last two questions in this practice quiz. So pause the video and try to answer 1 through 12. If you're in my biology class, I'd be happy to check your answers either before class or after class one day. So good luck.